Reliant Community Church last year was Level Up. And we haven't got a banner yet because I've just really been praying through the end of what God wants for us to do this year. And he really spoke it to my heart this year. And I told you last week that I really felt God was saying to focus, that we're to focus on what's most important. It's easy as a pastor, it's easy as a church leader to focus on growing the church and, and the finances. We've got to make sure that everything's paid for. And you get, It's so easy to get caught up in those things. And I feel that God is saying to me and to us as a church, you know what, focus on the most important things. My prayer this year is that we will have at least one person come to faith every week. That's 52 weeks. I'm praying for 52 souls for Shoreline Community Church. At least, minimum, 52 souls. What do you think about that? Our mission as a church is that everyone will become a fully devoted follower of Christ. So the second part of my focus for 2019 is that we will have every single person who calls Shoreline Community Church home, that every person will be in discipleship and growing in their faith. That's my goal, is 100% participation in discipleship. So that's community groups, that's Bible study. We've got some things planned that we have to roll out. So there's some things Along with that, focusing on discipleship as part, you know, we have it, but we want to focus even more on that. And so focusing is part of it, but then I really felt God say to me this week, it's not only just focus, so our goal this year is to focus and finish well. That when we get to 2020, we're still going. We don't kind of, and not that we did this year, but God did great things at Shoreline in 2018, didn't he? I mean, we're in our new building. I love the fact, I can't tell you how many people come to me and say, man, I saw the sign. We have the best sign in the entire town. We do. We literally, I have people approach me all the time and ask me if they could put their sign on our building. We have literally the best sign in the entire town for any business. God's blessed us. That's 2018. We reorganized and shifted so much of what we're doing in our systems and how we do things here at Shoreline in 2018. But that's 2018. So God has put things in place for our church to do even greater things in 2019. Anybody else excited about that? But we don't want to just start well, we want to finish well. And here's what happens in our own lives and sometimes even in church life. We feel doomed to repeat the habits and behaviors and cycles that dominate our lives. And so here's what we do. We come in and we go, you know what? I want to read my Bible. I want to pray. I want to be in church every Sunday. I want to be in a community group. I want to be a part of a ministry. I want to, I want to, I want to, but I never do. So you know what? I'm just not even going to try. Come on. I want to lose that 25 pounds, but it's the same 25 pounds from three years ago, so you know what? I'm just happy with it. Give me another donut, please. We give up. Why? Because we're frustrated, and we get so frustrated, we get to the point that we go, I just, I can't. And it's easier to give up than it is to press in. So, for the next six weeks, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at a group of people. Actually, we're going to look at an entire nation. And this nation, they epitomize the term, can't get out of my own way. If there were ever a group of people that just could not get out of their own way, this group of people, this nation that we're going to talk about over the next couple of weeks, they epitomize this. This, this group of people, this nation, they went around and around. They literally went around and around. If you look in the Bible, it shows you they just went, they wandered in the desert for 40 years. I'm 47 years old. I cannot imagine all but seven years of my life wandering around in a desert. Oh, look at that. I remember that. We saw that last year. You know? 40 years, an entire generation had to die off wandering around. Because they would not learn the lessons from their mistakes and change their behaviors and their practices. I mean, this nation, Israel, was literally led by God physically... Physically, with a cloud by day and fire by night. Think about that. You ever say, God, show me the way? Could you imagine if God gave you a fireball every night 
to actually take you where you're supposed to be. But thank you. Couldn't be easier than that. And just to make sure you didn't get lost, a cloud during the day. Come on. And yet Israel, and yet Israel was still lost. Not only did they have a cloud by day and fire by night, but Israel also had the Ark of the Covenant. Now, if you want to know what the Ark of the Covenant is, you just need to read, you need to watch Raiders of the Lost Ark. Okay? I can sit here and explain it to you, but just go watch Raiders of the Lost Ark, okay? God's physical representation to him. And then, not only that, not only that, Israel also had the temple that they carried around with them, set it up, and then the glory of God would come into it like a cloud and would cover it. And somehow they still didn't get it. So if you think you're having a hard time, you're not the nation of Israel. They, although God was physically represented to them, the nation of Israel kept wandering towards idol worship again and again and again and again. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to start at the very end of the story. And over the next six weeks, we're going to work our way backward. We're going to start in the promised land that God promises them. We're going to start there, and we're going to work our way backward. And my goal is this. My goal is that you will recognize the areas that you identify with Israel, and that you'll take some preemptive steps to reverse the cycle and to break that course in your life. That's my goal over the next six weeks. And I believe, I believe that 2019 can be a year of breakthrough. Anybody else believe that with me? Okay, so I can tell already, I'm loving this. Nine o'clock was dead. Don't tell them, and I'm not going to put this on our recording. It's not there, okay? You guys look like you're with me. You with me? You want good preaching? Do you? Okay, give me a couple of amens and go, boy. Okay, you do that, and I'll give you a good message this morning. Sound good? Because I'm fired up. Listen, I, everybody says, how do you do two services? I'm just getting wound up. I'm ready to go. You with me? Let's do this. Okay, so Joshua chapter 1, starting in the first verse, there, this is the end of the story. After the death of Moses. Everybody say death of Moses. Now you would think in this story, this is the end. The death of Moses. It's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of what God's going to do. The death of Moses, the Lord's servant. The Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. And he said, Moses, my servant is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Now, if you have your own Bible or you have the notes there, underline that statement. I promise you... What I promised Moses. That's an important, 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 important statement. Wherever you set your foot, you will be on land I have given you. From the Negev wilderness in the south to the Lebanon mountains in the north, from the Euphrates River in the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live. For I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. Be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I will give them, or that I would give them, excuse me. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instructions Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. Verse 8 says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written. And only then will you prosper and succeed in all that you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now, three things stand out to me in this passage that I want to talk to you about this morning. The first thing is this. Now catch this. God is faithful. Say that with me. God is faithful. God is faithful even when we're not. 
God's faithful even when we're not. And those times that you mess up, and in those times that you give up, and those times that you just throw your hands up and say, I just can't. And those moments when you just go, God, I don't feel you. I don't understand it. I don't get it anymore. I quit. I'm done. And those times that you want to do well, but don't. And those times that you feel like you should, but you can't. And those times when you're not faithful, I want you to know this morning that God is still faithful. God keeps his promises to his people. It's not contingent on us. God's faithfulness is not contingent on us. God's faithfulness is contingent on who he is. God's faithfulness is contingent on his person. He cannot, scripture says, he cannot deny himself. God is faithful even when we're not. See, the Israelites, they denied God, and they abandoned God, and they doubted God, and they disobeyed God, but God continued to be faithful to them. Does that sound like anybody else here this morning? I blow it all the time, but God is still faithful. Here's what he says. He says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Can I tell you this morning? God kept his promise. God is faithful. Faithful. Not only do I see God's faithfulness in this portion of scripture, but the second thing I see this morning is God's word. Catch this. God's word. God is faithful to his word. God has given us his word. What he said to jo- uh, Joshua is this. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night. Now here's what we do. A lot of times we grab our Bibles, we read it, and we forget exactly what we read. He says this, God says, meditate on it. In other words, stop, ask yourself, what is in this that I need to know? What is in this that's important to me? What's in this that will change my life? What do I need? What is God speaking to me? Meditate on it, he says, day and night. Because when you meditate on it, you begin to understand it. When you meditate on it, it comes alive to you. He says, meditate on it day and night. So I want to give you five reasons why we should study God's word this morning. As we start 2019, maybe you've had a hard time, and I'm going to tell you at the very end of my message, how God began to work in my life to get me to read the word, but but maybe you have a hard time with this. It's hard to just read your Bible every day. I want to give you five reasons why you need to stick with it, and even when you mess up and you miss a day or you miss a whole week, it doesn't matter, you need to stick with it. I'm going to give you five important reasons why. Number one, number one, you cannot love God and not listen to him. You cannot love God and not listen to him. Have you ever watched the YouTube of the little boy talking to his mom? Linda. Listen to me. Linda. Linda. If you haven't, first of all, you want to snatch that little kid up and discipline him. I keep waiting for mom to give him pow pow. Right? See, I'm about to give you pow pow. Give that kid pow pow. Quit warning him. Just pow pow that kid. Okay? Maybe you're not a pow pow family. I am. We pow pow. Okay? <laughs> that's the first thing. But that's hilarious. This little kid stand up. Linda, listen to me. Linda, 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 listen to me. Okay? I think God's saying to some of us, hey, Paul, listen to me. Listen to me, Paul. Paul, listen to me. He has things he wants to say to us. We can't say that we love God if we're not listening. To him. Look what Jesus said. He said, you must love the Lord, your God, with all your what? Heart. With all your soul. And what? With all your mind. In Matthew 22, he says, this is the first and greatest commandment. Now, how do we love God if we're not listening to him? How can we say we love God with our whole heart, mind, and all of our soul if we're not even listening to him? How do we listen to him? People come to me, I, one of the biggest questions I get all the time is, how do I know God's talking to me? He gave you the Bible. We call it God's word for a reason. It's because it's God speaking to us. Old Testament, they had a good excuse. Like, I don't know what he's saying. But i got to go find a prophet for him to tell me. We have the word of God. We have all his prophecies. We have all his promises. They're written down for us, given to us. God has so generously given them to us. So we need to be listening to him. Jesus said this. He says, my sheep, they know my voice and they follow me. How does a sheep know where the shepherd's going? His voice. 
If you've ever watched a shepherd, he begins to herd his sheep by his voice. They listen and they follow where he's going. They get in line and they know where to go. We know where to go as Christ followers as we listen to his voice. Second reason we need to read the Bible. Catch this. This is so good. Your faith needs promises to survive. Thank you, Jills. Your faith needs promises to, to survive. You go, what's that mean? People, I, if, you've, if you've been around other folks and they go, okay, what's it mean to be a Christian? I mean, okay, you're a Christian. That means what? You just believe. You just like have this belief. Like you just believe. And I'm like, no, dummy. I don't just believe. I'm not an idiot. We have all these promises from God. God's never failed. God, we have the word of God. We have the testimony of other believers. We see our faith is built on something. We're not just like out there wandering around someplace. There's a foundation to our faith. Our faith's foundation is the promises that God has given to us and the promises that God has accomplished in, around, and through us. That's what we have faith in. We know that God is faithful because God has been faithful. God has kept his promises to us. And so we have this great foundation for faith. It's not just blind faith, just take an arrow and shoot it someplace. And okay, well, that's God. Let's go, you know, we have these great promises. And let me give you some of these promises from Scripture that we have. The Lord himself will fight for you. Just stay calm. Maria, I'm going to ask you to skip the next one because I think I made a mistake on that next one. So go ahead. Okay, look at this one. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13 says this. For I hold you by your right hand, I the Lord your God, and I say to you, don't be afraid. I am here to help you. Isn't that a great promise this morning? Don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. Look at this one from John chapter 3 verse 36. It says, and anyone who believes in God's son, what? Has eternal life. Anyone who doesn't obey the son will never experience eternal life, but remains under God's ju angry judgment. And then we have Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. You know this one. And this same God who takes care of me will supply your needs according to what? According to his riches, which have been given to us in Christ Jesus. These are great promises. And guess what? These promises, what do they do? They fuel our faith. If you're here this morning and you say, you know what, pastor? My faith is pretty weak. I'm having a hard time with my faith. Can I tell you something? Get the scriptures out and read these promises from God because God is faithful to his word. God is faithful to his promises. And so when you go, I just don't know, I just don't feel it, I'm just not sure, we begin to get into God's word and we begin to rehearse these promises. And guess what? Our spirit, our spirit gets it. And we go, God is good. God's got my best at heart. God knows what I'm going through. I'm not alone. God is fighting for me who can be against me we begin our faith gets stirred it's fueled by these promises man that's good preaching pastor paul come on i'm working way too hard for this russ okay guess what the third reason we need to read our bibles we become like what we observe we become like what we observe. In the King James Version, it says, behold. We become like what we behold, what we spend time with, what we observe, what we take in. You've heard me say this recently. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future, right? Why? Because what we spend time with, what we invest in, what we put our energy into, what we observe, we become like. Now, if you think I'm lying, if you think I'm lying... You've done something like your parents do, and you went, oh, my goodness, I'm becoming my dad. Oh, my goodness, there's my mom, right? Tell me I'm not telling the truth, right? You do. Why? Because for 18, 19, 20, some of you 37 years, you lived with your parents. <laughs> we have millennials here. Love you. Right? You lived with your parents. And you become 
like them because you hang out with them. We were driving back from West Virginia the other day. This is hard to admit. My family, put your fingers in your ears because this is going to come back and haunt me. I sat there and went, oh my goodness, I'm just like my parents. This is crazy. How do I sound like them? How did this happen? Because being with them has shaped your life, whether you like it or not. You know what? You can't help yourself. You become, you become, you become like what you observe. So, all of us, listen to what it says in 2 Corinthians. So, all of us who have had that veil removed, right? That moment you came to faith, all of a sudden you went, oh, I see it clearly now. I, I, I couldn't see this before, right? But now all of a sudden you say, I can see it. We've had that veil removed, can see and reflect the glory of the Lord, and the Lord who is the Spirit makes us more and more like Him as we are changed. What's happening? We're being changed into His glorious image. Can I tell you something, folks? When you spend time in the Word of God, it begins to shape your life. It begins to shape your character. Some changes happen in you because you spend time with God. You spend time letting his words affect your life, affect your character, affect your your outlook. You change and you become more and more like him as you read, study, meditate on his word. Now listen, number four. Another other reason we need to be in the word is you will find, you will only find... Words of joy that you want, that you desire in words. Now, when you read that, when you hear that, that could sound a little funny. Like, how, how, how does that happen? But listen to what Jesus says in John chapter 15. He says, I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. Can I tell you something? Some of you, you go through anxiety. You go through doubt. You have fear, you are depressed, right? And we go through these things, and I can tell you something, almost every person that I see who's going through that, if I stopped and said, How, how's your prayer life? How's your time in the Word? Almost every time, I can, I can guarantee you, you go, well, I'm not really doing it. Here's why. When we meditate on the Word, when we meditate on God's Word, it begins to fill us with hope, joy, peace, okay? Because it speaks these truths to our spirit. The reason we're anxious, the reason we're depressed, the reason we're, you know, insert whatever it is, the reason is because we're not seeing things through the lens that God sees them through. Here's the lens that God sees them through. All things work together for the good of those that are called according to his purposes those of us that are in christ we know that no matter what happens no matter what happens i just had one lady this morning here at our church sat down with me and she said i just found out i have a terminal diagnosis of cancer of bone cancer and i went i'm so sorry she said about what it's good it's good god's got this God can heal me. She said, you know what? God healed me of breast cancer 25 years ago. God can heal me of this. And if he doesn't, it's good. I'm at peace. I'm good with it. That's faith that's founded in the knowledge of who God is. So when we come into these problems, we come into these circumstances of life, all of a sudden we get it because we know who God is, and listen to me, and listen to me, and we know who we are in Christ. Now that brings joy, doesn't it? That brings peace. We don't have to worry about anxiety and fear and doubt and all these things because we know, so we have to spend time in God's word, and joy, joy, Jesus says, will flow from us. Fifth reason, you guys with me? You still with me? Come on. The fifth reason we have to read our Bible is because there is work to be done. There's work to be done. We got a job. Right? I watched the new Mission Impossible movie a couple of weeks ago. Really good, by the way. I hate to say that. There's something in me that doesn't want to like Tom Cruise, and yet I always seem to like his movies. 
right? Him and Leonardo DiCaprio. Like Leonardo DiCaprio, there's something about him. I don't know what it is. I just want to slap him. He's too good looking, I guess. And it just drives me nuts. I just want to, yeah. Tom Cruise, like he's 55 and still jumping off of buildings. And I don't want to like his movies. And I like them, right? Except for Top Gun. Come on. Is that not one of the best movies ever? Give me a break. Just stop, okay? But anyways, so we're watching, and it's this assignment, it's this mission if you choose to accept it. We have this mission, church. God doesn't have a plan B. We're it. We are the hope of the world. We're God's emissaries to a lost and dying world. We have work to do. And so here's what Scripture tells us in 2 Timothy. It says that all Scripture, all Scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It's exposing those things that we have to work out in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong. It teaches us what to do, uh, to do what is right. Verse 17 says God uses it, God's Word, the Word of God, Scripture. He uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. So God is, thank you, God is working through scriptures. He is showing us what we're to do. Now here, here's what happens. We know what to do. Why? Because we have God's word. People say, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Every single one of us has a mission. Every single one of us has a mission. Your mission is to seek and save the lost. Jesus is doing that through us. Right? We are to go into all the world and make disciples. Every single one of us. Not one of us gets a deferment from that. God has different ways that he's using us to do that. To some he called to be pastors and apostles and prophets and teachers. Right? And he has a work for each one of us. So if we're in God's word, if we're studying God's word, if we're following God's word, we know what we're supposed to do. Right? So we know what we're supposed to do because of God's word. We know how to do it. Why? Because we have God's word. God's word instructs us. Just like he said to Joshua, this is your instruction manual. Guess what he's saying to us? This is your instruction manual. I'll show you how to do it, but you've got to be in the word. And we know when to do it. Why? When or how? Because of God's word. God's word is our instruction manual. It's there. We have to be in it. We have to know it. We have to live it. Okay, third thing this morning that I see from our text with Joshua. The third thing this morning, as we begin to wind this down, is not only God's word, but the last one is this, God's presence. We want God's presence. He says to Joshua, God says to Joshua, he says, the Lord is with you wherever you go. I love that promise. The Lord is with you wherever you go. God, are you with me when I go to my family for Christmas? It doesn't feel like it. He's there. Are you with me when I go to work? I'm there. Are you with me at 2 a.m. when the kid is sick? I'm with you. I am with you wherever you go. Where I send you, I'll never send you someplace that I won't go with you. I am with you wherever you go. Now, here's what happens. God begins to fulfill this promise. To Joshua. So I'm going to read you the very end of the story this morning. So it's at the end of them going through their wilderness wandering into the promised land. Just two chapters later in the book of Joshua, we get to Joshua chapter 3, verse 9. It starts here. It says this. It says, so Joshua said to the Israelites, now he says to the Israelites, come and listen to what the Lord your God says. Today you will know that the living God is among you. He will surely drive out the Canaanites, Hittites, Hivites, Perizzites, Girgashites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, and any other site you can come into contact with ahead of you. Look, the Ark of the Covenant, which belongs to the Lord of the whole earth, will lead you across the Jordan River. Now choose 12 men from the tribes of Israel, one from each tribe. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth. As soon as their feet touch the water, the flow of water will be cut off upstream, and the river will stand up like a wall. So the people left their camp to cross the Jordan, and the priests who were carrying the Ark of the Covenant went ahead of them. 
It was the harvest season, and the Jordan was overflowing its banks. But as soon as the feet of the priests who were carrying the ark touched the water at the river's edge, the water above that point began backing up a great distance away at a town called Adam, which is near Zarethan. And the water below that point flowed on to the Dead Sea until the riverbed was dry. Then all the people crossed over to the town of Jericho. Meanwhile, the priests who were carrying the ark of the Lord's covenant stood on dry ground in the middle of the riverbed as the people passed by. And they waited there until the whole nation of Israel had crossed the Jordan on dry ground. Here's what it says. It says, you will know that the living God is among you in verse 10. You will know that the living God is among you. God's presence was with them. He says, you will know. God's presence was with them then. And it was manifest in the ark. The ark represented the Lord's presence. They had this physical representation. And they also had the, the, the temple that they carried with them. They took it with them. And, and they knew that God was with them. But we today, we have the Holy Spirit that resides within us. We have this, we have the Spirit of God. God Himself lives, resides within us. He shows us. He reveals Himself to us through the Holy Spirit. And here's what I found. Now, I want to talk to you just practically this morning as the worship team begins to come. We're going to wind this down. So you say here this morning, you say, I, I want to live this out. I want to do in 2019. I want God to direct me. I want to follow through. I don't want to just start well. I want to end well. And the Holy Spirit's in me. I know the Holy Spirit is working in me and teaching me and wants to grow me. But Pastor Paul, I just can't. I just can't. I've tried and failed. I just can't. I've, I, I've wanted to, but I haven't followed through. I just can't. I, I have the desire. I have the desire. But I have a hard time doing. So I want to tell you this. When I was 16, 17 years old, I had a real hard time reading the Bible. I would start, maybe last a week, and then I'd, you know, I'd forget I just give up, right? Come on, some of you have been there. You know what I'm talking about. We want to, right? Especially like if you start your reading plan at the beginning of January and then you get to those begats, right? So and so begats, so and so and so and blah, 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 and you go, oh my goodness, I can't make it. Okay? Skip over it. Skip over it. Okay? Can I tell you something? It's there for a reason. All those begats, so-and-so begat, 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 begat. They're there so we know that God's plan has been fulfilled. And we have a line to see that. And when you begin to read it that way, you say, Oh, God, you're at work. You fulfill your promises through broken people, through a bunch of knuckleheads. That's okay. If you still can't get through, just skip. Take those days that they got all the begats, skip it. Go back to it. That's fine. I was 16, 17 years old, and I really, I, I had the desire, but I just couldn't do it. So even at 16 years old, I prayed. And I said, God, listen, listen to my prayer here. I said, God, give me an insatiable desire for your word. Give me a desire to read your word. And then I went out, and I got a one-year Bible. Now, this was back in the old days, kids, okay? We had to open the book. And there was these things called pages in them. They were real, actual pages. And they were really thin. And we had that internal. It was crazy. You cannot imagine what we had to go through back in the olden days. And we were on our chuck wagon. And we were cooking our meals out on the fires. <laughs> and so I got this one-year Bible. And I got through the whole year. God, I can't tell you. God gave me, I could not wait to get home at night. I, I, I was a night person back then. Okay? My wife has ruined me. It's 10 o'clock. I want to go to bed. Are you kidding me? Right? Now it's 10 o'clock. I'm like, I can't make it. I'll just sleep on the couch. So, God gave me. God answered my prayer. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. God answered my prayer. And I could not wait to get to my Bible time and read my Bible and I read through the entire Bible in a year. Back then they gave you a reading plan. Now you have version. If you get your your phone, download version. they have hundreds, literally hundreds of Bible plans that you can go through. But I really recommend at the beginning of the year, 
We have one that we're all doing together as a church. It's called Eat This Book. Okay? You friend me. You can follow along, see if I'm sticking it out. And I have days that I miss reading my Bible. I get going and, I, you know, the next day I go, oh my gosh, I didn't read my Bible. It, it happens. You'll see. Follow along. It's okay. You can miss a day or two or a week. Come, don't quit. Come back. Jump into it. Okay? But my point is this. God answered my prayer. I read through. I started this love affair with reading the Bible. And I began to grow in my knowledge of the Word. And here's what happened. Hear me. Because this is important. I got to a place where I wasn't dependent on my pastor or my parents for my faith. You know what happens? And I love you, but a lot of you come on Sunday mornings and you come here and you hope to goodness I'm good on that Sunday and that you get enough to get you through to the next Sunday. And for those of you who do that, here's what I want you to do, okay? My wife made potato soup today. We're having potato soup at the Allen home. Come home and have potato soup with me, okay? And then try and make it through the rest of the week on that meal. Because that's what happens when we don't read our Bible and we don't spend time in prayer. We go, Pastor, give me enough to hold me through. I hope I can make it. I hope I don't have any real, real challenges this week so it's easy and I can make it. That's what's happening when we don't spend our time in the Word. We've got to get a love. So pray, God, give me a desire for your Word. God will answer that prayer. God will answer that prayer. And then you have to have a plan. Okay? So here's the other thing I started to do. I started to attend prayer meetings. 16 years old, I started going to prayer meetings at our church. The other thing we did, you ready? Me and five other guys, we started a prayer club at our school. At lunch, we asked our principal if we could have the auditorium to just pray. We had three lunch periods, so two of us went the first, two, second, two, third. We just went in, we just prayed, that's it, we just went and prayed. We didn't do anything else. Six of us started at the beginning of the year. Guess how many of us were there at the end of the year? Sixty. 60 people at the end of the year start saying, hey, I, I heard you guys are praying. Would it be okay if I came? Yeah, come on. I don't go to your church. It doesn't matter. We're just praying. What are you doing? Praying. Read a quick verse and then we'd pray. 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it was. And then we'd go on with our day. We just prayed. We got a love for God's word and we got a love to be in God's presence. You know what we do here at Shoreline? We have a 6 a.m. Tuesday prayer. Now, I know, I know, come on, I don't want anybody to feel guilty, but just, just let me tell you something. 6 a.m., we come together and we pray. You can ask Randall if I'm lying when I say this. I hate every morning, every Tuesday morning when my alarm goes off. I hate it. God, you've got to be kidding me. Even on the warm days when I can come in in a pair of shorts, I'm like, oh, you know, you think I'd be ready? To, no. I hate it every Tuesday morning. I'm just being honest with you. But you know what? We come and we pray. We pray for each other's needs. We pray for the needs of the church. We pray for our missionaries. We spend time. We have an 8 a.m. prayer here at the church. You're welcome to come. It's open to everybody. Get a love for prayer. Get a love for spending time in God's presence. Right? Last night we had Engage. Every Saturday, every first Saturday of the month, we come together. And that's like the easiest prayer time because we have the worship team come and we praise and prayer. Last night we were here for two hours and we just prayed and we saw God. Uh, Teen Challenge blessed us last night and came with us. And what an amazing time. I mean, I was like, Whoa. I couldn't go to sleep. I had to go home and wind down for a little while. It was so amazing spending time. So I read God's word and I prayed. We get to develop these habits in our life. This week, starting tomorrow night, not tonight, but starting tomorrow night, the church will be open every night at 7 o'clock. You can come and join with us. What are we going to do? Pray. Anything else? No. Nope. We're going to pray. We're going to seek God's face for 2019. You go, man, 7 o'clock. Are you killing me, Pastor Paul? Yeah. Oh, that's hard. Yeah. It's hard for me too. I want to go home. I want to get double stuffed Oreo cookies. Glass of milk. Right? Watch Law and Order. I've never watched Law and Order. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It takes discipline to come out and be here. 
Folks, we do that. You know what? God hears response and our faith grows. So I want to encourage you to come and join us. We're also going to have the building open during the day. You can come anytime. We'll have the heat on. Just come in if you have lunchtime or you go to work late or something or you get done early. You want to just come and pray here. The doors are going to be open. The heat's going to be on. Come in. Spend some time in prayer. This is a week of fasting and prayer. Give something up. Some people are giving up sugar. Others are giving up two or three meals. If you want to fast the entire, you can do a whole fast, whatever it is. Give something up. Instead of doing that, spend time in prayer. And I'm sorry I've been long today. You guys have been awesome. So here's what I want to do. I want to give you some real practical steps here in your notes. Okay? So in order to finish strong, in order to finish strong, I want to give you three things. First of all, set goals. Be detailed. Set goals. Be detailed. Okay? Now here's what happens. I love going to the gym. Dave, every year, I know the people who are just starting new resolutions, right? If you go to the gym, you know what I'm talking about. So I'm up there, I'm doing my workout, and I look out, and I always know the newbies because they go to like every machine. They don't have a clue what they're doing. You know, you know, they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan. You have to have a plan, folks, right? Someone who actually loses weight or someone who actually builds mass, or, they have a plan. They go in and they know, same thing with reading your Bible and praying. You have to have a plan. So get you version or buy a one-year Bible or get a plan. Get a plan. You're not going to follow through on this if you don't have a plan. You have to have something that keeps you structured, okay? Be detailed. Secondly, welcome accountability. Go public. Welcome accountability. Go public. Tell somebody. My goal this year is to read through the Bible. My goal this year is to pray every day. My goal is to help me stick with it. It's why we have those accountability things in you version. So there's people looking at it going, man, Pastor Paul missed three days, sinner. No, it's not like that. But you know what? So we encourage one another. Say, hey, I noticed you missed. Let somebody into your life and let them be ruthless with you. Okay? Get a partner. Get a partner public. Lastly, review your goal regularly. Come back three months. Where am I at? Am I doing this? Am I following through on this? Come back two months, five months, six months. Keep checking up on yourself. Review, 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 review. Okay? So, 2018, maybe 2018 was I just can't. But can I tell you what 2019 is going to be? I can't. Would you say that with me? I can. One more time. I can. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Would you stay with me? We're going to sing one song and then I'm going to give you our benediction. This morning.